Yeah, so hello everyone. I'm so excited to share this presentation, a collection of thoughts and experiences with you all today. And um, in, in my daily life, you know, I want you to tell me on chat whether you resonate with any of what I'm going to say in the next few minutes. Uh, there are a lot of times in my life I have looked at managers and people in general at work and wondered whether they have a dual personality. Um, someone who is very different while at work, not very friendly, always interrupting, uh, not open to new ideas. But at the same time, if, if you check a little bit into the social media or what they do with the family over the weekends, it's always exciting or interesting to see that um, they are quite warm people. They are very fun, loving, adventurous. They're very protective about their family. It makes me wonder if many of us have a sort of multiple personalities, one catered for work and one that is really outside of work. And it's interesting to see how much of this has changed due to the remote setting, especially when you have to work from home. Uh, a part of home changed into work and everyone in the family actually knows uh, what kind of person you are at work too. Um, there are times when I have reflected on my behavior during a meeting, be it a team meeting or a general meeting, where I've, I've let out um, some parts of me and I've been really angry and I've wished, oh, I could press rewind. The wiser me would uh, react or respond in a different way to a certain situation. Yeah? I'm sure we all have that either in the family or at work. Some of us work really hard you know there are the smart workers there are the hard workers and all of that but even as we work hard every day inch towards our ambition and goal um, as women in tech as entrepreneurs as startups who are just starting off there's always a question hanging on top of the head uh, from the bottom of our heart what is really the purpose of my life you know every day seems to be so intense and exciting at the same time I quite feel lonely, you know, where are my spirit souls, the kind of people that I resonate with. And there are a bunch of people in our life, you know, we just have to close our eyes and think of them who we naturally gravitate towards always. You know, if there is a problem, you run towards them. If you have a question, you can't find answers, you seek their advice. They're so warm and charismatic and accommodative. Uh, exu you know, uh, exuberant and flamboyant, the spotlight is always on them. You know, you gravitate towards these kind of people. Yeah. Um, I know I am fortunate enough to have worked with people who have been my bosses, my subordinates, my peers. Uh, and there are times when I have wondered, you tell me if you have to, um, about this certain quality called being intuitive. What's going to happen, good or bad? There's, there's a little tingle in the heart. There's a little butterflies in the stomach or sometimes even rats running around in the tummy. Uh, but there is a certain intuitive feeling, you know, something good or bad is going to happen. I have wondered at many points in my life if this particular uh, intuitiveness, is this a skill, can this be acquired? Can I become better in understanding uh, positive, negative vibes or, or to know physically and from my heart what's going to happen so that I can make better decisions. There are times when, you know, we bump into people when we were at work uh, or even in events and meetings, you kind of um, repel from these personalities for no reason at all. And sometimes you also know why, you know, you're, you're running away from them because they're very rude any kind of conversation with them before you know it goes out of hand it becomes quite argumentative and they are very very overpowering not open to ideas at all especially in the startup world in the tech world i know we face a lot of people who fall under you know people who we gravitate towards or we run away from there are times in my life due to several failures due to sudden change of plans uh, when God disposes some of my nice pitches to him or her, there is a lot of shame that I remember associating myself with where I'm not really proud of my failures. I'm not proud that I attempted at something. I took the effort to try something that's really out of my comfort zone. 
and much later in life you know you bump into works of Brené Brown and the likes where you understand there's something called vulnerability and the mistakes that we make and the lessons that these like a lot later into my life i realized the power of vulnerability and how i can actually connect with people talking more about my failures than showing off my perfect side we also talk about future of machines in the same breath these machines you know by the world economic forum that talk about fancy reports uh by 2025 how more than 75% of human work is going to be made redundant and machines and automation and workflows are going to replace much of our work now interestingly or contradictorily or oxymoronically you can call um you know how you can observe some of these trends where the future is created by us humans at the same time the these humans us we are very much biased conscious or unconscious we don't know if we have learned certain lessons in life where if we are ready if there is a green signal to accelerate the present that we have into the future that we want by many of us who are still biased and have not really found the spot now when i think along these lines you know there's a lot of uh, two sides to the coin that comes into the picture in terms of uh, putting life to perspective how i am at work and how i'm growing into a leader inspiring people um, impacting positively now many a times when i walk through this thought lane when i have a quiet moment when i introspect i realize there's not much there's very thin difference between uh, how you want to be ambitious and people say go reach out for the stars and give your best grow to your full potential at the same time there are these very same people that dish out philosophical lessons that say oh you have to be detached keep doing your duty don't really worry about the results um you know they also say there is a very um, you know thin difference for people who know this give back whether they're being nice or they're being kind when they're giving you good feedback knowing that it's not necessarily going to sound all good or they're going to be nice and please you and they're going to say oh you did very well all the time and such times i have wondered in my life if i have taken some of these criticism feedback constructive materials conversations with people if i have really taken them personally when i shouldn't and if i have taken them seriously enough to bring about a change in myself am i really being self aware at one point or i'm super confident where i really have to make friends with vanity that's not the favorite end result right and there are times when i have uh, been through part of meetings i'm sure you would have to where you don't know if a person is really being diplomatic or they are kind of manipulative where they know the end result of the meeting this is what they want and they slowly work towards the psychology of every other stakeholder in the room where the end result is something what they want and they walk out of the room i have been witness to several of this in my life and i look forward to you sharing this in chat if, if you have specific examples as well i'll tell you why in a few minutes right there are especially during this remote setting of work especially when we are looking at a future of hybrid where i can work from home i can work from anywhere or if there is an office setting i can still work in this kind of hybrid setting how informal culture you know there is there is a flat hierarchy is slowly morphing into a casual culture where people don't respect other people's time they don't read your emails in full and respond in full or there is this really young generation sometimes you know they are confident they think they know everything and then they come and talk to us sometimes making our work and experience redundant if you know what i mean you know it's informal or casual so before i dive deep into why i am saying these random things how are we going to connect the dots i want to give you all a sincere thank you for sitting through this keynote and making an effort to we realize i observe how every day there is information exchange before it it the same event would have been a, a day when we all will be physically present in one room you can feel you know the presence of all of us the vibes but now in the virtual environment it's so easy to access information at the same time this information overload you know a sort of 
every time we are bombarded with new things but if you've taken the time to sit through this keynote and you're making notes and you're going to share with me some of how these points resonated with you i wanted to first start this talk with a very sincere thank you in tamil in my mother tongue we say nandri so i i give you all a very hearty nandri for sitting through this talk right so the topic i'm going to talk about is how to weave in emotional intelligence in everything that you do right because when we talk about women tech network when more than 15000 women are part of this network we talk about our networking skills we talk about leadership how uh, women are blessed naturally to born leaders and how we always believe in a growth mindset especially with entrepreneurs and how do we understand this word called coaching leadership mentorship and all of that so before i start i delayed my introduction a bit you know to give you a context of what we are going to talk and why and why is she talking about that now if you look at my transition over the years i'm going to be 40 in a few few couple of i think in a couple of years um i am basically a microbiologist and then i became a copy editor and then i became a communication and soft skills trainer and then i started training people on body language and presentation skills and understanding cross cultural differences and a little bit of storytelling and before i knew it i transitioned from this trainer in an in an it industry to picking up products that are software applications and because i am from a non tech background and over the years i gained some experience and expertise in storytelling i realized i could bridge the gap between technology onboarding by businesses and how i can work with them in simplifying some of the complexities tech naturally brings with it so in this process in my life of course there has been several uh, failures and life lessons that i've learned from that that somewhat put me in in a continuous learning spot or le- a mindset of a learner who gets very excited in learning complex things and finding my own analogy and shouting eureka and these little child like moments you know and uh, uh in this process somewhere you realize your personality and and when you talk to you when you go inward that you want to give back some of your learnings and you don't want this young generation to go as much as you did in the pre internet zone where you can't really find a mentor unless you're physically connected with them so now i do a little bit of mentorship for startups and i volunteer with some of the uh, young leadership associations that are run for non profit some of the women from across the world who have brilliant ideas and just helping them find their best potential and i also head the zoho for startups program at zoho and right now i am almost at the verge of completing a formal certified program on coaching and training on emotional intelligence and so in this process of uh, failing the first time i failed was really big when i flunked in math uh, in my school finals and i really didn't know that this failure could add an interesting milestone in my life story where without the twist you know what is life so this gave me that a uh, platform to tell stories about failures how i overcame those um times of shame and being feeling left out so in my own mother tongue there's this talks called josh talks that recorded my you know uh, verbal acknowledgement of failures and the lessons that i did in you know learn from life and very surprisingly there were 1 million views within a year of this video being published and then it gave me lessons why i'm why i'm sharing all of this is there have been more people who have connected with me when i share my failures when i share my lessons on vulnerability right so this has taught me lessons on being self aware uh, in seeking help when i really needed without feeling any shame to understand what failure could do to people around me and not mock at them and really resonate with their life stories and be more empathetic not just be in their shoes but walk in their shoes for a mile to really know what they're feeling comfort zone what is that right so you understand there is a lot of strength in vulnerability and every time moment to moment you realize you have to find the purpose in your life now when i talk about all of this given the little span of time we have where i have to finish my keynote before i even started i want it will be nice 
to connect with all of you some of you may know via the social media handles if you can find me and connect with me i'd be very very happy to share some more on emotional intelligence and also learn from you all and see what you all do in the tech space so uh, you can use any of these hashtags that women tech network is already using on on twitter or linkedin and then if you find any of the quotes or or tips that i'm going to share in the next few minutes use these hashtags and then i will be able to talk to you some more right so uh, this is zoho where i work i'm not really going to spend a lot of time but we've been around 24 years uh, delivering more than 45 plus software applications with 50 million users across across the world I have a connected ecosystem we work with startups msmes and small businesses why i am saying this is that because i moved from being a microbiologist into a tech space 100% sometimes you know how this outsider this this imposter syndrome works but it also has some benefits where it helps you see the where the gap lies see where many of us tech people start the narratives where only we understand it's in our head than the people on the other end whom we are serving through our tech solutions whether it's reaching to them in the way it should reach so in this process i realized it's not just iq every day it's emotional intelligence eq it's also called where there is a beautiful duet of your mind and your heart there is logic and there is feelings and there is different parts of your brain that come together to serve better right so in that process when you talk about emotional intelligence that was popularized by daniel goleman in 1995 it just refers to the capacity where you recognize your own feelings what you're going through at the moment in order to understand how others would feel in the same situation so that you become better as a person and you become socially better as a person as well you can build better relationship i so really love like this definition Sorry to interrupt you, yeah. Kapoor. We're running out yeah. of time here. I really love already? that you shared. Yeah, already. Okay. I really mm -hmm. love that you shared so many insights and especially sharing your journey and so many things around comfort zone and self awareness and empathy. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. It sounds like we need to have another event with you where you could share more also about emotional intelligence. And thanks for sharing right. your your handle so people can connect also with you and maybe discuss some topics right. in person. Right. Thank you very like much. I haven't even begun, but I love to answer some questions. And what I would do is I will share a PDF version of my presentation with you all so that you can sit with me and uh, ask me some questions around. You know, it's fantastic in your everyday life, irrespective of the role yeah. that you have. Yeah. Yeah, and also you can connect with people during networking, so they can talk to you one on one. Thank you very much, Kupu. Sure. That was great. Thanks Absolutely. for your energy. Absolutely. Really love that, and have a great evening and stay with us Absolutely. as much as you can. Thank you very much. Bye. -bye. Sure. Thank you, Anne. Bye bye.